Hello, today I'm going to give you an update on my Red Sea Reefer rebuild. I'm going to talk a little bit about the amino acid I chose for my tank and how the corals are responding to it. And I'm also going to tell you about how uh, I used potassium nitrate dosing to beat my algae. Hello and welcome back everyone to Amber Azul TV. It's been a month since I did uh, my tank rebuild and I thought this would be a good time to kind of uh, give you an update and tell you about the progress of my tank. All right, let's first talk about algae. So from uh, several months ago, I had uh, several uh, bits of my rock develop uh, green hair algae issues. And uh, you know, I tried to get a sea hair to, uh, to eat it away. I approved my uh, cleanup crew. And uh, I also noticed that um, the algae started popping when my nitrates bottomed out. So I went, I typically run my tank uh, between 10 and five parts per million nitrates. And uh, when I had the algae outbreak, I had zero nitrates. So part of the new changes that I implemented to help uh, manage uh, my algae issues was to actually uh, dose potassium nitrate to bring uh, the levels back to about five. And I know several of you uh, in the comments thought that that was kind of a crazy idea that the nitrates are actually going to fuel uh, algae in my tank and make the problem worse. But a month later, uh, you're looking at the tank. Uh, there is no, uh, uh, there's actually very little green ha uh, green hair algae. So it, it's definitely has receded. I'm not really sure why this happens, but I've noticed this several times before. So just from my experience, whenever nitrates have been up above five and and detectable phosphates, I have no issues with algae. Every time I had algae issues in my tank, whether it be green hair algae or cyano. Uh, or Dinos has been uh, caused by some kind of nutrient imbalance. Either nitrates have, are bottom, bottoming out or uh, phosphates are bottoming out. So uh, I'm not entirely sure why that's the case. Uh, my hypothesis is that if you have one of these elements, uh, either nitrates or phosphates, uh, near undetectable, uh, I feel like that perhaps gives nuisance algae a competitive advantage over uh, other types of uh, microorganisms and, and bacterial communities, uh, communities in the tank. This is just an idea. I'm, I'm not sure if it's, uh, uh, I'm not sure whether there's any truth to it, but uh, again, just speaking from experience, uh, whenever my nitrates bottom out or whenever my phosphates bottom out, I get the algae issues. And whenever nutrients are, are both detectable and kind of balanced, I have no issues with nuisance algae. So uh, uh, take it for, <laughs> take this with a grain of salt, uh, but I'm glad that uh, I, I'm not dealing with the algae in my tank. Now let's talk a little bit about amino acids. So in my last video, I reviewed several science papers talking about coral colors and uh, the main ingredient in, in improving coral colors is just giving them more light. And uh, at the end of the video, I kind of mused a little bit on about what that will mean for a coral in terms of uh, the coral's physiology, if it has to make all of these really large fluorescent pigments and non-fluorescent pigments. And I hypothesized that maybe uh, dosing amino acids while you're ramping up the light might have a, uh, might have a positive effect. Uh, I, I'm, I'll tell you from the beginning that I'm always a little bit uh, skeptical when uh, of anything that claims to kind of improve coral, or col uh, coral colorations. I, I did this video several uh, uh, about a year ago actually talking about how most coral uh, foods uh, don't have any benefits in terms of growth for Acropora. And so I, w I was skeptical, uh, but I did want to test out uh, the amino acids because again, uh, I think you know, if we're pushing corals to make more colors, it only makes sense to kind of provide them, uh, provide them uh, the building blocks for synthesizing proteins, or which is amino acids. So I did pick uh, this uh, product uh, by uh, Brightwell Aquatics. Uh, I'm not receiving anything from them. This is uh, this is just the product that I found based on my research. And I would say that overall, I've noticed an, an improvement, a, a slight pop in the colors, uh, but also a, a little bit uh, extra growth rates uh, uh, of my uh, Acropora frags. Now, I don't know whether th these benefits are from the amino acid dosing per se, or whether it's from the increase in, in the PAR. I've also upped the PAR intensity by about 4%, uh, or it could be a combination of both light and amino acid. Uh, either way, it, it's been a, a net positive effect. And actually, I was a little bit worried when dosing amino acids that I might run into some, uh, I don't know, nuisance algae, uh, some cyan on the sand. But so far, uh, I have seen none of that. 
So I, I will continue kind of adding more amino acids to the system as I ramp up the light. My radions are around 75%. I plan to take them all the way to 85%. So I think I'm going to add probably a couple of more mils of, uh, of weekly amino acids uh, as I go from 75 to 95, uh, 85% intensity. All right, a little update. I did change my refugium lights. Previously, they were uh, the regular floodlights you would get from uh, Home Depot. And I replaced it with this inexpensive grow light from uh, Amazon. It's LEDs and it, it provides uh, this uh, kind of pink purple light. And ever since I did the change, I am noticing that my Ketomorpha looks healthier and it's uh, growing faster. So I think it's a matter of the grow light just providing a better intensity for light to support the photosynthesis by the Ketomorpha. All right, now it's time to do the top-down tour and we could get to see uh, how the corals improved over the past month or so. All right, we'll start with the green slimer. Uh, the color has been about the same, but I'm definitely noticing uh, signs of growth on, on this. And here's Kenny, by the way. People are always concerned about Kenny dying, but uh, he's <laughs> he always makes it. He's a survivor. Uh, here is the refract pot of gold. It's still green and not gold, but it's definitely basing out a little bit. So I'll, I'll, I'll take that as a good sign. Here's the WWC Little Red Ferrari, and here's one coral where it has definitely uh, both increased in size and the colorations are much more darker uh, relative to a month ago. Uh, so uh, it could be aminos, could be higher par, but uh, either way it's, uh, it's a step in the right direction. Uh, above it is the Hawkins Ishinata, uh, definitely uh, not a big change in color, but definitely uh, an, a change in growth. Uh, so this new branch sticking up from the bottom, that, that's all I think uh, fairly new. Uh, my tiny uh, OP Orange Passion Frag is doing well, yay! Uh, not Maybe it, it has gotten a little bit more intense in coloration, but uh, no, no signs of uh, basing out yet. Uh, and then where are we going from here? Yeah, uh, this is the uh, Forest Fire Digitata uh, looking really lovely and it's uh, basing up. Uh, I'm kind of happy because I've, this is the first time I've actually managed to keep uh, Montepora uh, Forest Fire Digitata. I've tried previously twice when I started my tank like four years ago and I always killed them. So I'm happy this one is uh, stuck around. Uh, and then here is the Refraft USA Applejack uh, looking really good. Uh, my Clanfish they're getting really mean they keep like biting and attacking my other fish i, I think i may have to rehome them all right uh above here is uh, the blueberry wine acro uh looking really uh lovely and intense actually I, I think it looked better now than it did in the first uh, uh first version of my aquascape and the uh, strawberry shortcake is uh, looking pretty good which is uh yeah i'm very happy for that it's a kind of a sensitive frag so hopefully it stays like this and then shifting over to the middle boulder, this is the Jason Fox Jolt. And this is one coral where there's been a massive improvement in color ever since I, uh, well, I did the reaquascape and also with the changes in amino acids. So hopefully uh, uh, it, it will continue to improve. Uh, this is a golden jaw dropper. It is starting to turn a little bit from more of a green to a yellow, a yellowish green. So it's, it's supposed to be kind of a yellow coral. So I, I think maybe with the high par, it's, uh, the transformation is happening. Uh, another coral that is uh, shifting from green to, uh, uh, well, something else. Uh, this is a PC rainbow. This is supposed to be red. And uh, again, over the past month, I'm starting to see red hues. I mean, it's not red yet, but I'm starting to get some of the red hues. So I think again, uh, a step in the right direction. Then we have the Cali Tort, right? Uh, no SPS collection is complete without a California Tort, and uh, it's looking pretty good. Uh, color hasn't really changed, but it's uh, definitely like uh, branching out a little bit more. And then, uh, yeah, so there was one frag that hasn't been doing well with the change, which is the pink matrix. Actually, it started like uh, dying from the bottom, so I had to frag it. Uh, I, I think I, I think it looks like it, I'm going to lose this one, but. Uh, uh, yeah, it's. Yeah, I'm not sure whether it was uh, too much life for one that uh, for that one specific coral, or, or I, I don't know what it was, but uh, it's not. It's not happy. Uh, everything else is doing well though. This is uh, Marvin the Martian. Again, it's encrusting really well, and I'm definitely seeing uh, uh, more of the uh, bright uh, blue on the tips uh, uh, from uh, relative to a month ago. 
Uh, on the bottom of the tank, we have uh, Refraff Mr. Pac-Man. Uh, two tiny little frags, but they're growing really well. I'm sure we're going to have a massive colony in like a month or so. <laughs> uh, Major Laser, uh, certainly uh, improving and uh, branching out uh, with the extra light. And uh, it doesn't look like it here, but my Fox Flame has gotten deeper. The purples have gotten deeper over the past month. So uh, again, is it extra light? Is it extra amino acid? That I'm not sure we'll, uh, we'll know. And beside it is that Jason Fox TNT and Acropora, which is looking really well. I, I, I love the kind of brownish, uh, brownish red that it has. Here is the bonsai. Uh, again, this is a coral that benefited from uh, what, whatever happened in the last month. It's uh, the purples are getting deeper. Uh, beside it is the pink lemonade. Uh, I'm glad that I'm keeping the yellowish color on this frag. Uh, Sometimes I've had it before, and I typically kind of lost that yellowish color, but so far so good. And then where are we going from here? Oh, we're still looking at the pink lemonade. Uh, you, you notice that I have a lot of snails out because I'm shooting this video at night where my cleanup crew is out and about and uh, cleaning the rocks. Go get them snail. The pink Cadillac is looking uh, decent. I mean, uh, it did move from uh, 400 par to about 200 par, so perhaps uh, it's losing a little bit of its luster, but I'm, ho I'm sure it's going to come back in no time. Uh, the refraft uh, rainbow loom is looking really good. It, it's substantially improved over the past month in terms of colors and growth rates. And beside it is the electric uh, Mayaji Tort, which is uh, looking uh, mean as ever. I, I love that uh, colony. And if you notice on the bottom, I still have my clam. So this is the longest I've kept the clam uh, alive. So yay, happy as a clam. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you uh, like this video, please uh, do hit that subscribe button and uh, stay tuned for uh, more additional updates and also uh, more reef science videos. Have a good one, stay safe.